Modern. 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 We're prepping for a voyage. Modern. The force of an old fashioned equals whiskey mass times bitters acceleration. Why don't you make that a double? Modern Bar Cart. What's shaking, cocktail fans? Welcome to episode 215 of the Modern Bar Cart Podcast. I'm your host, Eric Koslick. Thanks for joining me for this year-end recap episode, where I take a few moments to zoom out and appreciate the highlights from 2021, then take a quick peek into the crystal ball to anticipate what's coming down the pike in 2022. But before we do that, let's send this year out the right way by giving you the chance to make yourself a drink. This episode's featured cocktail is the Millionaire Cocktail. To make it, you'll need three quarters of an ounce of either Jamaican rum or bourbon, which is kind of a weird way to start a cocktail recipe. Don't worry, we'll get into it. Three quarters of an ounce of apricot brandy, which in most cases is going to be a flavored liqueur, not a true brandy. Three quarters of an ounce of slow gin, which is a berry flavored gin liqueur, and three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. Combine these ingredients in a cocktail shaker with ice. Give them a good hard shake until the ingredients are properly chilled and diluted. Then strain into a stemmed cocktail glass and enjoy. Like the Corpse Reviver cocktail family, which doesn't seem even remotely concerned with sticking to a set ingredient or flavor template, the Millionaire cocktail family seems to pair a spirit with a couple different fruity liqueurs that somehow produce a pinkish color. Sometimes you'll find egg white, sometimes you'll find a citrus juice, but none of these things are a given in the millionaire cocktail family. Personally, I think the Jamaican style rum, rather than the bourbon, is the way to go here. It just has so many more fruit friendly flavors than most bourbons do. And it's probably one of the best spirits to counteract what I'll call this recipe's problem child apricot brandy with only a few very rare exceptions where you encounter a true apricot eau de vie apricot brandy refers to a sweet often artificially flavored liqueur it sits on liquor store shelves in the sour mix section and is often frowned upon by serious bartenders for its cloying sweetness In the 1930s, when the Millionaire Cocktail was popular, were bartenders infusing actual grape brandy with apricots? Did they have access to a supply of actual apricot eau de vie that has since vanished? Well, it's hard to say, but next time you're in the market for an equal parts sipper that goes down easy and is absolutely bursting with fruit, you'll know exactly what to pick up at the liquor store. So, now that you're equipped with an affluently named yet elusively formulated cocktail that will most certainly impress your guests, let's turn our attention back to the roller coaster of a year that was 2021. Starting off here, I always like to begin with the numbers, which is kind of like a statistical checkup or wellness visit that looks at the vital signs of our weekly spirits and cocktail show. In terms of downloads, we rocked 67,000 of them, which is a full 10,000 more than we earned last year. So thanks to all the new listeners who represent those 10,000 extra downloads. I'm super glad that you're part of our growing community, and I can't wait for you to see what we have in store next, which we'll be talking about in just a few minutes. Our most popular episode by sheer quantity of downloads was episode 188, Reviving Ancient Stills with Dr. Eric Stroud, which clocked in at over 1,500 downloads all by itself. It was a super eye-opening interview for me personally, so I'm not surprised that it was so popular with our audience. If you haven't checked it out yet, hopefully this is all the incentive you need to go visit that conversation. Again, that's episode 188, Reviving Ancient Stills with Dr. Eric Stroud. And wrapping up our numerical portion, I've got one final number I'd like you to consider. 10. That's the number of podcasts that were finalists at this year's Tales of the Cocktail Spirited Awards ceremony, and we are so honored to have been one of them. Unsurprisingly, Dave Wondrich and Noah Rothbaum, who graced us with their presence in episode 200, were the recipients of that Spirited Award for their show, Life Behind Bars, 
But again, I and the rest of the modern bar cart team are just so unbelievably honored to have been among the finalists. And we're very flattered that you all took the time to nominate us. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And let's see if we can win that Spirited Award in 2022. Next up, I want to share some of the more qualitative things that we've really worked to improve on over the course of this past year, the strides we've made that are hard to measure in terms of raw downloads. I kind of view this as a mini shareholder meeting since I I think of all of our listeners as having a stake in what we do, right? So shareholders is kind of an easy way for me to think about that. So let's look at a few KPIs, to use a business school term, key performance indicators that I think are really important to our show and its ability to keep thriving and improving. The first one is something that's very evident to me as the person who does most of the legwork for the show, but it might not be super apparent to you as the listener. But the thing I'm probably most proud of in 2021 is how we've been able to leverage partnerships with PR firms. I know, again, it doesn't sound all that exciting, and it's probably not all that evident, but let me break it down for you here. A little bit of how the sausage is made. Our inbox, podcast at modernbarcart.com, as well as a couple other email addresses I maintain, have been flooded over the past several years with pitches from PR firms and publicists trying to get us to feature their clients' products, books, and brands. I get dozens of pitches each month, all of which take time and energy to sort through. From the beginning, I've been super picky about who comes on the show, and I'm very clear that I'm not in the business of running an hour-long infomercial. I'm here to provide real nutritious content that makes you, the listener, a better drinker and home bartender. That mindset definitely narrows down the field and ensures quality interviews for you, but it's still a lot of work to wade through all those cold pitches from low-level PR interns and associates who get paid to blast out a generic pitch to as many email addresses as they can. This is the way that 95% of all PR firms go about business. I don't understand it because I think it's sloppy and a little bit disrespectful, but unfortunately, it's the norm. So this year, I focused on really pouring all my attention into a couple of really high-quality PR partners who pitch me directly and thoughtfully and offer incredibly high-quality guests who all have something to say rather than just a product or a book to pitch. Great examples of interviews that were placed on our show through these strong PR partnerships include Sam Calagione, founder of Dogfish Head, Tim Warlow, co-founder of Fever Tree Mixers, Ryan Christensen, co-founder and head distiller over at Bar Hill Gin, and Ian Burrell, co-founder of Equiano Rum. It felt like in the years leading up to 2021, I spent most of my time squaring off against the inbox noise and waging an active battle against these PR firms. But by changing my approach and partnering with only a few of the best run shops, I think I was really able to bring on some top notch guests. This leads me to the next item I've been working hard on since, I mean, if we're being honest, the very beginning, becoming a better interviewer. This year, I really made it my focus to make the interview process engaging and rewarding for our guests, which almost always leads to a better quality interview. What does that look like? Well, partly, it looks like asking more open-ended questions and making sure I don't interrupt the guest while they're communicating the information that they're uniquely qualified to share with you. Again, this might not be something that you notice. It's actually designed to be invisible because when I'm doing it correctly, I'm more of a facilitator that pushes the conversation from one breadcrumb to the next until we eventually reach our destination. But if you want to sanity check this whole interview quality thing, just pick an interview episode. And as you're listening and find a segment that you really enjoy, ask yourself the simple question, how much Eric is there in this? Chances are you realize that the best moments are when I'm mostly invisible except to ask for a little bit of clarification or elaboration. The other way I've really doubled down on interview quality is in the research and question writing department. I send out interview questions to all our guests before the recording so they can prepare and figure out what I'm most interested in discussing, of course, but most of these folks, especially the heavy-duty guests who come to us through our PR partners, are interview veterans. They've been asked the same handful of questions a zillion times. So if I'm not careful, they'll just spit out the same canned response they give every other interviewer. 
that's not useful to you. That doesn't extend the conversation or add value in any meaningful way. And it doesn't make our podcast stand out. So this past year, the two main improvements I made in this arena were to make sure I read or listened to other interviews with my guests to see what a baseline set of questions looked like, and then intentionally avoid those surface level questions by figuring out what the true heart of their brand or their product or their story seemed to be. In my conversation with Sam from Dogfish Head, the heart of the interview wasn't about beer, it was about maintaining creativity at a truly large scale. In my recent interview about American whiskey with Eric Zandona, the heart of the conversation wasn't about what's popular these days, it's about identifying the historical and regional forces that are responsible for those trends. And when I interviewed Dave Wondrich and Noah Rothbaum in episode 200 about the Oxford Companion to Spirits and Cocktails, the real story wasn't necessarily what it took to create that book. It was how research and reporting on spirits and cocktails in the 2020s is so different compared to how it was 15 or 20 years ago. There's always something a little bit deeper, a little more complex, or just plain beautiful behind each guest, and I've been trying to make all the good interviewer moves to try and pull those out for you. I think it's what sets us apart from more casual or banter-driven shows in the space, and I hope you'll let me know if there's anything else you think I can do to keep becoming a better interviewer. Finally, I have one last big improvement to share on the personal front for 2021. All of a sudden, one day earlier this month, I became a father. Occasionally, you'll hear me mention little tidbits from my personal life when I'm on the air, but this is a huge event for me and for my wife, so I thought I'd give it more of a formal announcement here. Our daughter's name is Ivy. She joined the human race as a happy, healthy little baby, and she and her mom did great throughout the entire pregnancy and birth process. Luckily, the timing of her arrival was pretty good because I've been able to take the last couple weeks of December to have a little mini paternity leave away from the podcast to bond with her and give my wife a hand around our home as we adjust to the new routine. This does, however, present the following question. What does the arrival of a newborn mean for the podcast? To be honest, I'm still figuring that out. I record most episodes in my home office, and I do make at least a token effort to keep my audio quality reasonably high. So there might be some logistical bugs to work out on the recording front. When a screaming baby isn't yours, it tends to be a negative audio presence, and I'm definitely looking to avoid that. Originally, I was thinking I might need to drop back to a bi-weekly publishing schedule rather than our current weekly routine but now I'm not so sure. I've got some really fun interviews and no ABV spirits and cocktail content coming for dry January, as well as a few other interviews in the hopper that I'm super stoked about. So for the moment, we appear flush on content, but a change in the publishing schedule may still be necessary. This could look like a bi-weekly show for a period of time, or it could simply mean we publish episodes as they're available, as opposed to being married to that Thursday drop every week. So moral of the story, I've got a baby. Woo. Yeah. So if you see our publishing schedule change in any way without warning, don't worry. I'm not intentionally ghosting you. I'm probably just engaged in a little bit of a juggling act as we try to get into a more stable routine with our awesome little girl, Ivy. This episode is brought to you by Near Country Provisions. I've been a customer for about a year now, and I can say without hesitation that the delivery of frozen farm fresh meat that I receive from Adam and his team makes me do a little happy dance every month. Not only does Near Country offer grass-fed beef and pasture-raised pork, but they also have an awesome selection of chicken and seafood. And the best part is it's all local and it's all sustainably farmed and harvested. You can customize every order, or simply leave the selection in their capable hands like I do. Near Country even offers fun add-ons like bones for soups and stocks, as well as special holiday offerings like turkeys, brisket, and more. If you live in the Mid-Atlantic, that's D.C., Maryland, or Virginia, and you're sick of the same bland selection at the grocery store, or you're looking to drastically improve the quality of the protein in your diet, Near Country Provisions has you covered. 
Head over to nearcountry.com and enter the code BARCART, all one word, when you sign up for your subscription to receive two free pounds of bacon or ground beef in your first delivery. That's BARCART, B-A-R-C-A-R-T, all one word, at checkout. This is easily one of the biggest quality of life improvements I've made in the last year or two, so I hope you'll give Near Country Provisions a shot and let me know what you think. Now, back to the show. Next up, let's talk about things to get excited about as we enter the year 2022. As you longtime listeners out there may know, I've been a bit skeptical about all or nothing booze free initiatives like Dry January or Sober October, which seem to operate more on the basis of convenient rhymes than anything else. But I realize I'm in the minority on this, and I've had several requests from listeners asking for more alcohol free spirits and cocktail content. So I've been in touch with some of the best no ABV spirits brands and authors I can find, and we should have plenty of product reviews and interview content on that front throughout the entire month of January. We will of course also have plenty of full octane spirits and cocktail content for you as we make our way through Q1 of 2022. Another thing I'm excited to do next year is to try to give you more value. You get more for being a listener of the Modern Bar Cart Podcast. And a very significant portion of me thinks that I can best do this by leveraging video and trying to give our listeners more and better ways to engage with us. We did try our hands at this about a year ago with a couple of live streams of the podcast, but that initiative suffered from a couple major flaws. First, with the emergence of TikTok and Instagram Reels. So much video content is making the switch from horizontal to vertical and from long form to short form. For a podcast that usually runs for about an hour and that usually has two people talking at one another, both of those trends are moving in the complete opposite direction of what would be good for us. So a little bit tricky there. Second, trying to attend a live podcast recording or streaming is complicated. It's hard enough for me to coordinate with a guest across time zones, let alone that we most often record during business hours when our listeners aren't able to just drop everything and tune into a live stream, let alone ask questions and actively engage with us. At the end of the day, listening to the podcast should be easy and fun, not something you need to put into your calendar. Like I said, I do think video is going to be the best way to give more value, but I want to hear your thoughts and opinions about what that looks like. I don't want to deal with the headache of starting a Patreon so that only our premium subscribers can access video content because I don't like charging for content, and that sounds, again, like more of a headache than it's worth for you, the listener. Similarly, I want to find a way for our listeners to participate more in the show. For a while, I thought Clubhouse was going to be that solution, right? About a year ago, it was super hot, but I see it kind of fizzling out these days. There's also the option of creating a Slack or Discord channel, but that still seems to create more noise than value, at least initially. So please, if you have a great idea about how we can do more to engage with our listeners and create a space where you can interact with guests, with me, and with each other about spirits and cocktails, please do send us a DM on Instagram at Modern Bar Cart or email podcast at modernbarcart.com. I will say from a technical standpoint, we normally record our episodes on a service called Squadcast. I'm thinking about migrating to a service called riverside.fm on the recommendation of our awesome audio engineer, Sammy. So that platform does seem to have a few more video hooks and integrations. So I think that's going to be sort of like the half step between where we are now and what it's going to look like when we have lots of full like video options and like live call-in options available to you. So we're going to start playing around with that early on. And hopefully as we get into 2022 in earnest, we'll have a lot more ways for you to engage. Speaking of which, the last frontier of listener engagement, it seems, is the domain of real life. And being that our cute little pandemic has now transformed into more of a big sloppy endemic, we need to approach the topic of being together in person carefully and with lots of flexibility surrounding change and unexpected contingencies. But having put out those disclaimers, I will say that I am fully planning on attending Tales of the Cocktail 2022 in New Orleans, live and in person for the first time in three years. 
That event will take place from July 25th to July 29th, 2022. I'm working on some educational seminar related stuff, so stay tuned on that front. May have some news to share in a little while, but if there's enough interest from folks, I'd be happy to also try and organize some sort of meetup for our listeners, something to make your trip to the Big Easy Extra Special. I don't know, maybe we can all walk into the Sazerac bar and order Ramos gin fizzes at the same time. Maybe somebody will challenge me to an alligator hot dog eating contest at Dat Dog on Frenchman Street. I don't know, we'll figure something out. But please do reach out to let me know if you're interested in attending this 20th anniversary Tales of the Cocktail Conference in July. Uh, We do have, I believe we did a recording of the kind of like highlights of the 2019 event when we were all there live and in person. So you can go ahead and check out that interview if you want to get some live and sort of in the moment feedback of what it's like to attend a Tales of the Cocktail Conference. But I can say it is one of the highlights of every year, especially when I can attend live. Overall, I know I just asked for a ton of feedback from you guys. So what I'm going to do is I'll put together a short survey that you can fill out in less than five minutes. So if you're listening out there and you're interested in really having your voice and your opinions guide the decisions that I make as we continue to grow the podcast and try to offer more and better features for you, our listeners, please reach out to me however you'd like to. And I'm going to send that survey your way you will have a very, very direct impact on the decisions we make moving forward. I'm Eric Koslick, CEO of Modern Bar Cart and host of this here podcast. Thank you for making 2021 a great year in podcasting, despite the uncertainty that seems to dominate the rest of our shared world. And I can't wait to see you very soon when the year ends in 22, which is my lucky number. Hopefully that means great things for me and for you as we continue to grow and improve our knowledge of delicious spirits and cocktails. Cheers. Hey everybody, thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, there's two big things you can do for us here at Modern Bar Cart. One would be to tell your friends and family if you think they'd enjoy listening to us talk about cocktails. And if they don't download podcasts, they can always stream our episodes on their desktop directly from the show notes page at modernbarcart.com. The other thing you can do to help would be to head on over to iTunes or wherever you download your podcasts and leave us a review. Five stars are great, but we're more interested in your feedback. And the beauty is, the more reviews we have, the easier it will be for other folks out there to learn about our show. We're trying to start a cocktail revolution here, and by spreading the word, you're helping us fight the good fight. You can always reach us by emailing podcast at modernbarcart.com if you're looking for cocktail or bartending advice, or if you're a pro who would like to pull up a mic and be interviewed for all to hear. Also, definitely follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Modern Bar Cart for cocktail porn, recipes, and entertaining tips. And keep an eye out for new product releases and special offers, which are happening all the time. We love our listeners, and we really enjoy giving you exclusive discounts and sneak peeks at our latest and greatest cocktail projects. This episode may be over, but for you, the mixological fun and adventures are just beginning. So remember, folks, drink responsibly and experiment boldly. This episode was made possible with editing and sound design by Samantha Reed and a little bit of year in review magic by yours truly. This has been a Modern Bar Cart production, copyright 2021.